Hello, this is Stuart Fensterheim, the couples expert. Here's another edition of Three Minutes with Stuart. This week has been a wonderful week so far, but I've been thinking about this song that keeps running around in my head. It goes like this. Well, I've spent a lifetime looking for love. Single bars and good time lovers were never true. Playing a fool's game, hoping to win, and telling those sweet lies and losing again. I was looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for love in too many faces, searching their eyes and looking for traces of what I'm dreaming of. Hope that I find a friend and a lover. I bless the day that I discover looking for love. You know, people look for love in all the wrong places. When the person that's sitting right next to you may be that. You need to put energy into your relationship. And you can have what you need because it's right there beside you. Because of this misunderstanding and the lack of knowledge of how we get love and the way we need it, what we understand now more than ever that in parenting children we have to be more than just physically present. It's not enough to just be there and just be present. We need to be focused parents with authenticity, engagement, and responsiveness to have people feel love in a very deep way this security is so very important. With that criteria in place, people feel loved in a very deep way. This leads people feeling very secure that the world is a good place and that you should expect that your needs will be met by the people who care about you. Their physical presence is necessary, but less important than the emotional presence. We all need someone who loves us cares about us to tell us how important we are to them. And then they see us in those positive ways. We need to have affirmations about our worthiness. It's so very important. If these things were not present when we were growing up, we need to do some work on ourselves to be the best parent we can be to ourselves. Here are some specific ways that you can heal some of these wounds. It's not easy but worth the effort. Number one, the first thing you could do is keep doing some of those things that you're good at and that you love doing. Spend time telling yourself how passionate you are about these things and how good it makes you feel. For some, it is hard to find something you love doing and that you're good at. It's worth the effort. Number two, take some measured risk, nothing really dangerous, not jumping out of airplanes or anything, but try things that push you out of your comfort zone. There's a really good book out there called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. That would be my advice. Do it, one foot in front of the other. But be patient. Building self-esteem takes courage. You'll feel so proud of the courage that you have when you push yourself and see that you're stronger and braver than you may have known. Having someone to love gives you these kinds of strengths. Number three, get physically strong. Our physical life and emotional life are tied so much together. Exercise and emotions go hand in hand. Eat healthy. Number four, be compassionate. Be compassionate to yourself. We are so harsh on ourselves, harsher than anyone else. What we tell ourselves is nothing compared to what others might say. We are awesome and you need to be surrounded by people who tell you that. Build self-compassion. The things you say to yourself sometimes is harsher than anyone else. Practice self-affirmations and surround yourself with people who love you, care about you, and tell you how awesome you are. We usually are the worst enemies in this area. We say such harsh, critical, demeaning things that has us feeling that the world's an unsafe place similar to the way that our caretakers may have had us feeling. One of the questions to ask yourself is would you tell anyone else the things you tell yourself? If the answer is no, don't do it. 
use thought stopping techniques to help you cut off that negative talk. Be your best friend and be that positive voice in your head. Number five, insight and understanding and awareness will give you emotional freedom. The insight means realizing why things have happened the way they did, why you react the way you do, and not making excuses or blaming anyone else. Take control of your thoughts, your behavior, your reactions, especially to those we love. It's about assessing the depths and the location of the scars in our emotional life. So you don't keep falling into these same patterns for the rest of your life. Keep this last thing in mind. Kelly Clarkston, she has a song that talks about the love of her husband and how it's helped her confronting and dealing with the abandonment of her father. And that when her present life with her husband, which is so loving and secure, there's no need to focus on the past pains, and life is good. I echo this sentiment and wish you all well, and please stay connected. And if you struggle with any of this, please give me a call. I offer a free 30-minute, no-obligation consultation to see how we at the Couples Expert might help you really feel strong about yourself, connected with your partners, and minimizing the negative effects of some of the caretaker issues. Take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.